Well, hello and welcome to Christian Crew. We're so glad you got to join us. It's an opportunity for us at Spirit and Word Fellowship to get together and talk amongst ourselves about uh, things that are important to us. And we know that if we have things we want to talk about, that we want you to join in on the conversation. You might actually have the same questions we have with our special guest speaker. And right now at Spirit and Word Fellowship in, in March of 2022, we have our revivalist event. Evangelist Pastor Renee Moore. Hello. Hi, Christy. We're so glad you're here with us. I'm glad to be here this week. Well, we're going to get right back to you. I'm going to introduce our panel to you today. Pastor Patty, how are you today, Patty? Good. How are you? I'm glad to be here. Good. Pastor Patty is actually works in our healing ministry and our welcome ministry. And so if you come to Spirit More Fellowship, she and her husband, Pastor Gary, will be the first people you meet, hopefully. And we're so glad you're on the panel with us today. Me too. Thank you. And we have Karen McNichol. She is my, I just, I just love you, Karen. I love you too, Patty. I, we all love <laughs> but you, Patty. Patty, um, Karen is my right hand in ministry. She is co-leader uh, in the women's ministry. How are you, Karen? I'm doing well. Yeah. I'm very excited to be here yeah. and so thankful yes. that I got to be here last night yes. for Renee. Yes, yeah. so if you uh, haven't uh, been able to tune in, you can actually go back on YouTube or our, our website and watch the previous messages with uh, Renee and uh, you will be blessed. I know that. I know that you, you got your world rocked last night, didn't you? I sure did. It was good. You know, it, it, uh, just to come to the altar and get that prayer, Mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, you don't have the words, right? You don't know. Uh, but God was giving, uh, words, you know, for us last night. And I just, I just loved it. Yeah. Yeah. And we have our dear sister, Jada. Hello, Jada. Hi, Christy. I do not want to mess up your last name because it's it's a fabulous last name. I've never heard it before. So tell our panel, our audience, I'm sorry, your last name. Last name is Trochia. Trochia. Okay, I put a ch on it. No, it's a sh. Right. Trochia. Trochia. Okay. Well, that is a, that's just a cool last name. So I'm going to, you're going to be saying it for the next, you know, two days because it's a great word to say, but we're so glad you're on the panel with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And then last and not least is our dear sister, Renee. Hello. Hi, Pastor Christy. (laughs) We're so glad you came here all the way from Oklahoma. All the way just for this interview. And you were, you have had a really (laughs) crazy (laughs) schedule, I know, for the last few weeks. So uh, for you to just take time to spend it in Stephen City, Virginia, this beautiful Shenandoah Valley. We're so glad that you got to say, you know, got to be here with us and to speak into our our uh, our ministry here, but the Lord's uh, the Lord's work, the kingdom work. So we're glad you are here with us. It's my privilege to be yes. here, and it is a beautiful area, yeah. beautiful people, yeah. beautiful people here. Well, just to kind of kick off, tell us, tell the audience, if you would, uh, or just tell us just what you want us to know about who you are and your, um, and, and what's going on right now. Well, uh, I am an evangelist, a revivalist. My ministry is Healing Touch Ministries, and I've been doing this for a while now, uh, about 25 years uh, in full-time evangelistic ministry. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just, I travel, I travel the nation. I was in Tucson last week and uh, Virginia this week. So that's kind of coast to coast. And then on uh, Wednesday nights, just within the last few months, I've kind of taken on a a new role of uh, Wednesday nights. I'm kind of pastoring, associate pastor, evangelist pastor. I don't know what my title is, but I'm doing some teaching on Wednesday nights in my home church. And I'm loving that because I'm teaching, not just preaching. And uh, so that's been a a joy to take that on and be more connected with my home church over the last year. So God, I think we're in a season. I know that God is stretching me and I think he's stretching a lot in the body of Christ right now. We're in a transition season like never before. And I don't want people to get discouraged in this season because we're being stretched, but there's glory on the other side of the storm. Yeah. 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 And you shared that last night in your message, Mm -hmm. actually the Sunday night message. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it was, and it was an amazing message, actually the perfect storm Sunday morning's message Mm -hmm. uh, and the, uh, and and the picture of what the Titanic, you -hmm. know, had the warning. So it was a wonderful, wonderful message. Good. I'm glad that spoke. Yeah. Well, tell me, you're, you said you mentioned your home church. Can you? 
we're happy to, to for you to mention it here, and then they can go back and maybe watch some of your messages Absolutely. There. My home church is uh, Muskogee First Assembly in Muskogee, Oklahoma. And, of course, you've got to have, you know, a really cool name these days. And yeah. so we go by <laughs> M1A. Oh, That's okay. That's what we're known by. Okay, and the so, SWF likes the M1A, I guarantee it. <laughs> and so, you know, I am like the original Okie from Muskogee. I yeah. know a lot of people, you know, remember that old song. Yeah. And yeah. So I am an Okie from Muskogee, we will, yeah. and there is no escape from that. I've been in <laughs> Russia, I've been in Africa, and I don't know how those people know Okie from Muskogee, but you mentioned Muskogee, and they somehow yeah. connect you to... To that. So. Yeah, well, that's great. Even you, you're a dog mom. I think we're I all dog, dog moms mom. on the yes. panel. Yes. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and you have a wonderful dog. Uh, tell us a little, you, uh, you just share the name. Well, I mean, his name is Boomer. Of course. Because of in course. Oklahoma, we love Jesus and the Oklahoma Sooners. <laughs> And so it's so go. much fun when you go to Texas and people have to say Boomer. Yeah. I love that. You know, there's a big rivalry there. Yeah. And so uh, yeah. he is a 70-pound gold, golden doodle, and he uh, is my fur boy. Yes, absolutely. Uh, they just find, just find their way in your heart. That's and, uh, it. Well, we are so excited. Uh, actually, Spirit and Word Fellowship has been in a season of revival. It's just been on the hearts of us here, especially as um, in the turbulent last two years. Uh, it's been something that we have been pressing in, even pushing back on mandates and um, any uh, what we feel is government overreach and uh, m just meeting whenever we could, uh, safely meeting, but meeting wherever we could and and. It was on Pastor Chris's heart. He has uh, the 517 Ministries as well as being on staff here uh, for making ministers out of members. And so that's been our heart, you know, here at Spirit and Word Fellowship. And so you coming has been part of the revival. Mm -hmm. And we're so glad you're here. And uh, so I know that when we get together, we just like to chat. So that's kind of where this is. <laughs> Patty, uh, we just want to know more about you. What was your question, Patty, for um, Ms. How Renee? long have you been in ministry, and what do you do for fun? Well, uh, this fall will be my 25th year of full-time evangelistic ministry, and I started really, really young. <laughs> um, I actually did. Uh, looking back, I guess I would have been in my late 20s when I started this, and uh, it has just been amazing uh, because if... If God can use me, God can use anybody. Mm. I'm just absolutely amazed that he has given me a little corner of the field to work, you know, in this end time harvest. And so every year I'm just amazed. I used to think, Lord, am I going to be able to fill up another calendar year? Mm. And God fills it up. Yeah. Um, I've been blessed. Uh, this year I'm taking more time off. My father recently passed away. And so... Uh, the last year, I've tried to stay a little bit closer to my mother, and this year, I'm taking a little bit more time off the road to be at my home church and to be with family a little bit more, but typically, I'll be on the road 45 to 48 weeks a year, mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's pretty busy for an evangelist these mm -hmm. days, mm -hmm. and so I'm just so grateful to God. I, I don't know how he does it, but he's able to use anybody who's willing. Right. So, Amen. Yeah, it's true. Now, I saw actually you had posted on your Facebook that you had visited Ukraine early in your ministry, or at least it was just a few years ago. You, it was, uh, I'm not sure how old you are or were in those pictures at when you went to, to Ukraine. You're talking about, uh, I believe years that was about 1992. Yeah. I think like the revolution and all that when the wall fell, I think it was mm -hmm. about 91. And it was just shortly after that, uh, I went with, uh, under my dad's covering mm -hmm. at that time, um, and we went over there, and we were some of the first people to be able wow. to go over there and share the gospel after communism fell. Mm -hmm. And oh my goodness, the hunger of mm -hmm. those people. Mm -hmm. uh, we wow. would give them Bibles, and they would, they would kiss our hands. Wow. They, and just mm -hmm. tears streaming. And in, in America, right. things that we take, you know, so much for granted. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's a real blessing to know that we were able to be a part of the beginning of that harvest. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand. I, I think it's almost like 80%, maybe higher, of the people in Ukraine are Christian now. Mm -hmm. 
That's and I'm not sure what it is wow. in Russia, but I have friends that are doing amazing works uh, in uh, Russia and Ukraine. So, you know, it was uh, really a blessing to get to be a, a part of that at the very beginning uh, when when communism fell. So I have a... I have a real close connection because when you've been there and you've touched mm -hmm. the people and you've mm -hmm. prayed for the people. And I, I remember the day that uh, we were packing up to head back home, uh, just weeping all morning because I did not want to leave. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling the Lord, Lord, if I was married and not a single woman, I would stay over here because I had just fallen in love with the people. Right. And so when you see all these heartbreaking pictures, right. uh, there's a close connection there. It yeah. just makes a difference when yeah. you've been on that soil. Yeah, it really does. And I know, Karen, you kind of um, touched on that with with what you were wanting to know from Renee about um, about what uh, what her the mission of her. Yes, um, Renee, what I and others I think would be very interested in is what is your mission statement as an evangelist? Not just for this area, but just for the world. I think that's needed in this day and time. Um, one of the things that the Lord put in my heart early on as our little ministry slogan, or however you want to say it, uh, a slogan or logo, uh, was touching the world one heart at a time. Mm -hmm. And... Of course, we want to reach as many people as we can for Jesus, but it's also about the one. Yes, yes. And sometimes we can get so busy trying to reach the world that we look over the one. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus is all about, is yeah. leaving the 99 and going, after going and people. finding the one. It's such a relational. It's, it, it really it, is. It, it, he's so relational. Uh -huh. And I think that's the the draw of Jesus. Mm -hmm. To, I mean, it's the heart of who he, you know, one on one, one by one, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and uh, so I love that, that that's, that was. But I, you know, I do believe that the Lord has called me to be a watchman on yes. the wall. Um, in 2005, my ministry took a pretty major shift mm -hmm. um, because of my personal healing testimony, and I may be sharing that Monday night, um, in the revival, uh, I had a pretty incredible uh, healing uh, testimony. Uh, the, basically, the Lord raised me from the dead when I was three oh, years wow. of age. And um, so through the healing uh, that was verified by doctors and everything, when I was 20, healed of debilitating seizures. Oh. And uh, uh, that's been many years ago, never taken another Heal for seizures, never had another seizure. Wow. Uh, so I was healed when I was 20, and because of that, Healing Touch Ministries was born. Mm. And so that's the name of, of uh, the ministry. And so I've always had a, um, a, a longing to see people healed uh, physically, mm -hmm. spiritually, and emotionally, mm -hmm. because we're body, soul, and spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, I don't want to just see people healed. I want to see them whole oh, right. yes. in every area right. of their life. Right. And so we, you know, that's been a big emphasis of mine. Mm -hmm. um, One more question. Um, last night when, or maybe it was yesterday morning, and you said Jesus has done everything he's going to do on the cross. That, I think, gave me confidence. I know I, I just felt that uh, throughout the congregation that mm -hmm. we needed to hear that. Even though mm -hmm. we should know that in our spirit, mm -hmm. it sometimes life just bogs us so sure. far down. We're asking for things that's already there. Mm -hmm. We just have to, like you said, mm -hmm. reclaim the territory. I yes. would like to hear more about that as well. Mm -hmm. That reclaiming the territory. Mm -hmm. I think the enemy has just in this last season tried to wear out the people of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. The book of Daniel, and I know in context it's speaking of the time of the Antichrist, but uh, 
Daniel, the book of Daniel says that the enemy will seek to wear out the saints of the Most yes. High. Yes. And I know that is speaking of a time that is to come, but I also believe that is happening right now. Yes. Because even yes. though the Antichrist has not been revealed, Paul said the spirit of the spirit of Antichrist mm -hmm. was at work in his time. Mm -hmm. How much more in our time? Right. That's right. right. And, uh, and right. the enemy is just trying to take the fight out of many of us. Right. And sometimes we just need to be reminded of the mm. things that we yes. already know mm -hmm. and to stir up that gift that is within us and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. help each yes. other fight the, the good fight of faith. Right. And then, you know, there, you know, I, I love, I, I picture myself and Aaron, but coming along yes. and just lifting our brothers and sisters up in mm -hmm. prayer and, you know, for, because we're not in this alone we're, mm -hmm. and we're, but so often the enemy wants to just isolate us mm -hmm. and make us feel alone. Right. But that is not at all yes. what Jesus had for us. And that's why, you know, I love the live streaming. I, I believe the live streaming serves a purpose mm -hmm. when people are sick or they're shut-ins. But, oh, my goodness, if you are able to get to the house of God, right. there is something that you get here with the fellowship right. of other believers yes, that true. you yes. do not get right. watching, you know, right. a good message right. on live stream. It's, it's the fellowship of other believers. Yeah, it really is. And and uh, I know for us, we have our life groups. We've got Spirit More Fellowship has uh, campus life groups that we meet at 920. And we have off-campus life groups mm -hmm. that we just try to, to make those small core connections mm -hmm. that when somebody is not feeling well, somebody needs prayer, mm -hmm. somebody... Uh, just it just needs that encouraging word that it, it you know you've just got a, a small group that is collectively you know connected into a big gr group but I, I just I think it's so important it was it was wonderful uh, in biblical times the the house church you know and I and I believe it I believe in the corporate church as well but um, yeah it, he does want to just wear us out mm -hmm. and uh, take us out mm -hmm. you know by doing that so um, but we're so glad. And actually, you are staying with one of our uh, just most precious members, Jada. I'm just going to put it out there that uh, talking about house church, you guys are probably getting to spend some time together yes. and enjoy uh, each other's company as she's been your guest. And I've enjoyed it. Yes. I've enjoyed it so much. We're so. being real uh, spiritual and scriptural. We're breaking bread together and, <laughs> yes. and all that. <laughs> breaking bread with spaghetti. I think yes. that that's... Jada's yes. a really that's... good cook. I might never go home. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Not really. But thank you. <laughs> oh yes, you are. Yes, you are. But what is some? You had a question that uh, your that our audience might like to also know as well. Want to know? I would like to know if you were ever given the chance to sit down with Jesus, what would you ask him, and why? It's a deep question. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. I think I would ask Jesus. Uh, can I have three more questions? <laughs> Is that, is that a technicality? I don't know. I don't think. Uh, I don't think I could get it all just in. Just one. A run-on uh, sentence. <laughs> just a run-on question. Just keep asking. Um, I'm probably not going to be real spiritual here. Uh, okay, I that's think all right. Can I be petty? Yes. I can be petty. You, uh, of course. Okay. I think that Jesus just loves to hear us <laughs> talk. I think I would ask the Lord. Why have you re why have you required me to be single all these years? <gasps> yes. Oh, when wow, you sent them one. out two by two, okay. why have you required me to be single? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm not Jesus, but I can say that uh, these men they just might need a little more work. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> before the right, right one's ready for you. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> what, 53? <laughs> need, he must have needed a lot of he's work. He's going to be amazing. <laughs> Renee, he's going to be amazing. We're going to just claim that right now for you. That's... <laughs> Is that too petty? No, no. no. I think no, it's that's honest. Not spiritual, is it? That's okay. Just, that's the great thing about Jesus. You can just be completely honest you with can. him. You can. You're not going to shock and you him. You keep knocking on that door yeah, because right. uh, we had another sister that we went to go see, uh, Suzanne, and uh, it was a while for mm -hmm. her, and yeah. she asked the Lord that several times. And actually, you were talking about uh, David Wilkerson. Uh, he had a lot to do with this lady being uh, proposed to in New York City by uh, Ron Cox uh, in the assembly 
of God Church. So Suzanne is my friend. Yes. She has an amazing story. Let that story. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hear her yes. testimony yes. about There the you go, Renee. Organic. If it can 34 happen. Street. Right. Yeah. If it can yeah. happen to her, it's yeah. going to happen to us. It yeah. touches my it heart will. every time I hear her story. Yeah. And, you know, I'm okay with it. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, several years ago, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And back in the early years of my ministry, the enemy tried to use loneliness to just yes. mm, detour me and derail me mm -hmm. where I would get involved in relationships. Yeah. Just I was so lonely. Yeah. And it wasn't... When you have a call, you can't marry just a good man. Right, right. He has mm -hmm. to be called. He has to be exactly. anointed. He has to be all in. Yeah. And uh, the it's enemy important. used that in my early years of ministry to distract me. And I would say the last 10, 12 years, um, I just said, you know, Lord, if if you've got a man for me, you're going to have to send him to my door. Mm -hmm. That's it. And so now I'm always looking for the UPS man. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be amazing. <laughs> but I'm, I'm okay with it now. Yeah, and I have right. found contentment uh, with the Lord. Yeah. And I, I have said, and I'm, I'm going to share this because, you know, I don't know who will be seeing this. Maybe this will help somebody. Um, I, my prayer has been, Lord, if I can do more for you as a single woman, let me remain single. Mm. If I can do more for you as a married woman, then bring someone into my life. Yeah. And so I don't know what the next few years holds. Mm. And but that so I'm is, okay with that. Yes, I want yes. I want him to receive the glory. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And that and that is a prayer that the Lord will honor. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it lines up with the scripture, absolutely. Sure. And uh anytime we pray scripture, we know he's honored to um he's he ha you know, he's he has to honor his word, mm -hmm. you know, he's uh, not a liar. Um, so that's, <laughs> we'll, we'll be praying with you. How yes, about it? Girls? We yes, will. We Maybe we'll make we bridesmaids will. or something because well, it happened right here. And you know what? That's awesome that Jesus is our Boaz. <laughs> not, that's he's, right. He's, he's, he's the he married is. ladies too. Yes. But we've had to depend on his love and support. Right. You know, during those lonely times, but he will not let you miss it. Yes. That's what I tell my daughters, my grown daughters. Mom, did you think about this one? Or, I said, Jesus is not going to let me miss it. Yeah. yeah. I love what you said, though, because one of my famous sayings that people, they may, they may not remember my message, but they remember one thing that I say mm -hmm. in my meetings is this. I'm waiting on a Boaz, not exactly. another Bozo. Exactly. Not another yes. Bozo. Exactly. And we love godly men. And I, yeah. and I wish men understood how important that is to to us as believers, yes. believing women, that that we find men who are strong and mm -hmm. and are ready to lead and and uh, we're we're ready, you know. So, well, you what's next coming up in your ministry? I know that um, you shared you had a dream, and I'd love for you to share uh, with our audience what's what's going on, what's going on with um, your with with that, and what's the Lord saying to you? Well, the Lord has uh, spoken to me. Uh, more than usual through this crazy season beginning in 2020 of uh, COVID and all of that. And um, I, I shared in 2005, my ministry kind of shifted. Mm. And in 2005, I felt like the Lord kind of called me to be a watchman on the wall, mm -hmm. uh, much like maybe Brother David Wilkerson, some people like that. Uh, it was right after Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. Mm. And I had a visitation from the Lord in my hotel room mm -hmm. right after that on a Saturday evening as I was preparing for a revival to begin that next Sunday morning. Couldn't rest, just completely restless. Mm -hmm. And um, just in frustration, I couldn't rest. And I just began to cry out in frustration, Lord, what is this that I'm feeling? And I don't, I don't mean to sound spiritual super spiritual or anything like that, mm -hmm. but the Lord just came down mm -hmm. in my room and I heard him say three words, three times. I heard him say the coming storm, the coming storm, the coming storm. Mm -hmm. And so since then, um, the Lord has given me words for the nation, prophetic words, mm -hmm. um, prophetic messages. Uh, and I'm, I'm concerned about where we're going. And I've been warning the church for about 15, I guess, 17 years now. And I'm beginning to see some of those things mm -hmm. taking place. Right. Um, in 
2020, February of 2020, around Valentine's Day. I don't know if I shared these dreams when I was with you back in the fall or not, but um, the Lord gave me a dream of uh, two storms. And uh, I, I was in, in my home, and I was surrounded by family and friends, and we were just enjoying each other and chit-chatting, just enjoying each other. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there was a storm that began to uh, to come overhead. And uh, it, it just appeared. In fact, my pastor appeared in the dream and said, don't you know there's a storm coming? And he no sooner got that out of his mouth than that storm hit. And it hit so suddenly, the safe room was just steps away. We didn't even have time to take oh, cover. All yeah. we could do is just hunker down together as a family and just pray and plead the blood. And as that storm passed over, well, finally that storm did pass over. And it, it's as if I stood up uh, out of the first part of that dream and was kind of translated into the second part. I left everything in that first mm -hmm. part behind. I walked through my house and opened up the kitchen door that in the natural, it would lead out into my garage. But in the dream, when I opened up that door, it led me into a church. Mm. And the church was dark, and the church was empty. The chairs were stacked and pushed up against the wall. And I'm walking through a dark, empty mm. church building going, where is everybody? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Mm. When I yes, heard yeah. another storm go overhead. Mm -hmm. And this one was even more violent. And I just began to cry out, God, is this, is this building going to hold is this building going to hold? And uh, finally, the storm passed overhead, and I began to look around because I knew that there had been some damage done, and I began to look around, but I, I discovered this, that um, the roof that I'd been so concerned about was still intact, so the covering was intact. The covering. The foundation was still intact. Wow. Is anybody getting yes. this? Yes. yes. See where you're but when I looked to my left, yeah. I saw the wall of that church completely down. And I realized I was standing in a church without walls. Wow. 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 I just got crazy mm -hmm. goosebumps. I don't know about yeah. you all. Yeah. And so four weeks after that dream, churches all across America were closed down. Mm. Wow. And I believe that God is calling us right now to get outside mm -hmm. of our comfort zone, outside mm -hmm. of these four walls, right. and become that church yeah. without walls. Yes, the one, one, the one body. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he's coming back for the, his spotless bride. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and we're going to have to come together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tear down yes. these walls. I mean, when you when you say walls, are, are you speaking denominationally? Uh, what what do, what does that mean walls to you? Walls of you every know? kind. Of yes, every kind. I think racially, ethnically, you know I, what? You know, it's the kingdom of God. Yes, it is. Yes. It's yes. um yes. I I carry credentials with the assemblies of God yeah. and I love my fellowship. Right. But I am a kingdom person. Right, absolutely. And it's not about a, a denomination yes. or a fellowship. It is about the kingdom of God. Exactly, right. exactly. Yeah. And I know that coming, and many of you uh, on the audience know that I came from the Baptist background and, and had to uh, walk away from that for just reasons I won't go into. Uh, landed in a Methodist congregation. Boy, those people know how to love you. They just yeah. know. And I have yes. never been loved like I did in the Methodist church. And and then coming in to, uh, to this uh, congregational body, and we've just decided to be non-denominational. We've got roots, but it's just the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's the focus. It's the kingdom. Uh, absolutely. I love that yeah. dream. I love it. Awesome. So are you going to share a little bit more of that? In, um, I know that, you know, that was, I can't remember if you'd shared that before when you were with us before, but what's coming up? Um, so if you're, uh, you may be watching this today and, and you can watch Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and you'll be able to actually watch Monday nights, but what's coming up uh, Wednesday? You know, I'm still seeking the Lord on that okay. on Wednesday. Uh, sometimes he's kind of last minute with me. Okay. Uh, Keeps you on the I, edge. I think he has to be last minute with me or I Tony, would overthink it. Tony wouldn't like that. No. Tony can handle that. I'm just no. saying. 
He likes everything organized. Jay, Jay, he's, we got to have those organized people, but I think Holy Spirit's so cool that way. And I think he does that with me yeah. because I like to know in advance and yeah. I like to plan and right. uh, and the Lord's like, no, nope, mm. I want you to be dependent upon me. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love but it. I know the Lord's going to move. Yeah. And if he was. I, and I, yeah. I would yes. encourage you, if you're watching this, come be with us Wednesday yes. night because I really believe the Lord is is going to touch and minister. Yeah. The Lord's pouring out his spirit right now upon yeah. people that are hungry. That's oh, it. I'm yes. seeing that yes. everywhere yes. I go. I'm seeing more people saved. I'm mm -hmm. just, I'm seeing miraculous things. Mm -hmm. Other evangelists that I know, they're saying this has been a record breaking year so mm -hmm. far. Yes. Mm -hmm. And with all the things that are happening in the world, I think it's finally getting our attention. Right. Mm -hmm. I really right. think Waking it's finally getting our attention that yeah. the hour is late. Yeah. And what we do for God, we need to do now. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And yes. that's and that's exactly been the core of your messages here. Let's we got to get it done now. Mm -hmm. No more waiting. The the boat's about ready to yes. to pull up anchor, and God's going to shut the door. So anyway, well, we're so glad that you got to be with us. And Thanks this for is just me. always such a treat. We ever we always get a little nervous, but we always just have such a good time <laughs> doing it. So. Well, we're so glad that you tuned in. And if you want to be a part of this uh, wonderful, wonderful revival that's going on, if you want to come down here Wednesday night, you can come down to 1275 Tasker Road. That's in Stephen City, Virginia. If you're not from our area, we would love to have you. We will welcome you in these doors and, and make you feel just like you're part of the family. And I know that uh, Renee will have a special word, and we don't want you to miss it. It'll be even better if you're here in person. But... Uh, if you can't make it, we're glad you can watch online. So, well, ladies, thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. It's always a good time, right? Yes. Yes, yes it's it always a good time. Well, we hope you have a great day. Thanks and God bless.